Hello, my dear students. I welcome you all to my channel. Today, we are going to learn an English chapter of class 10. The name of the chapter is The Elixir of Life, written by C. B. Raman. Now, the meaning of elixir is something very powerful or magical. So, yes, the magical power, which uh, the substance which has magical power to give a life, is nothing but water. So, we are going to learn about that in today's lesson. But before that, students, if you are viewing my video for the first time, do subscribe my channel and hit the and hit the bell icon so that you get the notification of my latest upcoming videos. And if you like the video, do hit the like button. So let us know about the author. Sir C. B. Raman is the author of this uh, chapter, and he was keen interested in science. Or in, or from his early boyhood days. As a child, he was very much interested in this field and he is also famous for his discovery, the Raman effect. He was awarded with the Nobel Prize for Physics in 1930. Even King George has uh, praised him and for his contributions to the physics. The government of India has awarded him with Bharat Ratna and Soviet Union honored him with the International Lenin Prize in 1957. So this is about an author and a great scientist. Now let us see what he has to say about the water. He says that man has through ages been finding or imagining something very powerful substance in the life so that he gets some divine amrita, a divine water or a liquid so that he gets immortality. But he forgets to notice that the true elixir, the true magical part in of life lies in him lies very near to him and that is the most commonest of all liquids that is plain water yes students plain water has the power and strength to give life to all the living organisms no organism can survive without water for more than four to five days so it is such a powerful and elixir of life and then he says i remember of standing on the line which separates the libyan desert and the valley of nile in egypt once when the author was standing uh, between the line which separates the Lib libyan desert and the nile valley in egypt he saw a wandering scene there that one side of the one side where it was desert it was full of the sand and there was no peck of green grass anything visible there whereas on the other hand where there was Nile Valley and the river was flowing towards that side, he could see that the life was streaming there with the most fertile land, the greenest of all and the densely populated areas. And he was wondering what is making uh, these two lands being so different. Then why? It is the water of the river Nile flowing down to the Mediterranean from its source for a couple of thousands of miles away. Now then he is coming to the conclusion that is it because water, yes, the river Nile which is flowing across from the Mediterranean from many couple of thousands of uh, miles and coming here. So it is what leading to the good teeming environment and the vegetation over there. Then he also adds on that geologists tell that the entire soil of the Nile Valley is just the creation of this river Nile which has been flowing throughout from many couple of thousands of uh, uh, years and years and from the highlands of the Abyssinia and from the remote central Africa and it has made it the formation of the Nile Valley over there and that is what leading to the ancient civilization and the life which has been sustaining there throughout the years. You can see the Libyan desert, the Nile Valley, the difference between both can also be seen here. Okay, then he gives the example that uh, many others to emphasize that this common substance, we are taking this common substance, water, for granted. Though it is very common, it is a very powerful substance as we saw that no living being can live without it. It is most wonderful thing on the earth which has been playing an important and significant role in shaping the course of earth's history. And it will also help us help to play an important role throughout Till the, uh, till the earth exists. There is nothing which adds so much to the beauty of the countryside as water. Yes, students, if you go to the countryside, to the village areas, you go to see the scenic beauty, the waterfall, the stream uh, which is flowing over there, but it is just unnoticed. 
it is just left out with a uh, left out any with and without any importance it's just used for the cattle to quench the thirst we are just leaving it unnoticed then we are having rain fed tanks which are very common in south india but sadly even it is neglected the maintenance is not done properly the silt has been uh, just accumulated at the down and the reflection of the light cannot be seen we cannot see the bottom of the tank and the water just the muddy and the silty layer is been uh, visible there the, the water color also changes in muddy uh, but surprisingly these lakes are so beautiful to see when it's natural when it's clear when it's very uh, calm you can see the beauty of the sun and at the night times the the gloomy moons share the reflection can be seen on it and it adds on to the scenic beauty and uh, you know as we give the importance of eye on the human face in the same way we can give we compare the uh, the, the the lake and the water bodies of the earth as as the gloomy part as the important part of the earth it is as important as it and uh, it uh, we also come to know that one of the most remarkable facts of water is its power to carry the silt silt is nothing but the small particles of rocks sand which are very small it has been just uh, uh, carried away with the water when it flows sometimes when the water is flowing very heavily very uh, like with a with a good force then it can carry a large number of large uh, pieces of the rocks too and the small streams which just continuously flows it carries many small fine, finest particles of the rocks and the sand with air and it keeps on moving it it keeps on flowing every year throughout the year some of the uh, streams you can say which are perennial it just flows and it carries it keep on carrying small particles along with it you can see the countryside stream over here you can see the silted water tank over here you can see the silted water color of the water is also changed because due to the accumulation of the mud and the silt which is there on the base okay and then the flow of water has undoubtedly played a great part it is also said by the geological process that uh, the flow of water has been playing an important role in forming the earth surface because it carries the water it it cuts the rock uh, the, in the small pieces and it is helping in the formation of the surface of the earth too and uh, if it is not checked properly it may also become a destructive part it may lead to soil erosion if the water is not stopped if the water is just continuously flowing and flowing throughout in years and years it may lead to soil erosion if it takes the harsh moment if it takes the bigger flow in the stream so it has to be checked it has to be closely studied and the measures had to be has to be taken then the next is soil erosion so soil erosion also occurs in successive steps early early steps may not be noticed by anyone but if it is not checked away it may become a very painful uh, scenario later on it may lead to the gull deep gullies and the ravines too now in, if uh, we have this deep gullies and ravines ravines being created on the earth surface then it becomes impossible for the agricultural purpose the land becomes uh, useless for the agricultural purpose then this also leads to many problem then uh, and because india is an agricultural country we should just uh, pay importance to all these things then so it also may lead to soil erosion now soil erosion is this the flowing of the top layer of the uh, fertile soil so if it flows away or is washed away with the water then we cannot have a fertile land and it will not be fit for agriculture so all this has to be kept in mind and uh, precautions should be taken so that this flowing water is not being wasted then you can see here the effects of flowing water or if it becomes great and it leads to soil erosion it forms in deep gullies and the ravines so these are the deep gullies and the ravines which you can see here then the minutes of soil erosion if soil erosion occurs then we are not will not be able to do agriculture and because india being an agricultural country it is an urgent need for us to check and have a prevention act so how to prevent this so students we can have terracing of land we can construct the burns we can check the flowing of the water contour cultivation can be done properly the plants could be grown according to the land so that it 
it uh, holds the flow of water and the soil the fertility of the soil is been uh, stopped uh, by eroding uh, ahead with the help of with the water flow so this is how we can work on it then water is the basis of all life and every animal and plant needs water for its uh, existence in the earth in this in this earth uh, as we have seen earlier no fluid can live without this no human being can live without this fluid and even the soil needs the moisture moisture with the help of water so that it can give the life and growth to plants and trees so this thus very essential liquid here and preservation and utilization of water is very important and very uh, it's a fundamental uh, thing to be done for the human welfare then apart from the artisan water the ultimate source which is uh, which, which we have is rain water and snowfall see we cannot consume or drink the sea water because it's salty so we just drink and we just uh, dependent on we are dependent on rain water so it is our duty to just collect it and save it for our future so that it is not getting wasted because of the flow and it goes and just joins in the sea and then again it becomes useless if it is mixing with the salty water so thus we have to uh see that uh, it is not being wasted then the problems of soil erosion and inadequate irregular rainfall are closely connected if we prevent soil erosion then the irregular rainfall will also be balanced because we know it is interdependent it is interconnected to have a balanced environment we need to have proper um, plantations and proper growth of the we should have afforestation so that we have a proper and regular rainfall so these are the things we have to keep it in our mind then it is evident that uh, our resources we depend upon seasonal rainfall because much of it, uh, the work is done by agriculture and uh, we also have a good seasonal rainfall but it is necessary for us to save that water and utilize it further and not letting it go and uh, just flow and go and mix up with the seas and it becomes useless then then incredibly large quantities of quantities of precious fluid are lost in that manner if it is not been checked then it is have it has become a nation, national problem nowadays it has to be considered in a national lines it has to be uh, taken as a great issue then vast areas of land which at present are just scrub jungle it should be turned into afforestation and the proper planning should be done to plant the trees and the saplings over there so that again it can hold the flow of water and the soil fertility then closely connected with the conservation of water supplies is the problem of afforestation again the same thing uh, because the water is not properly uh, preserved or if it's flowing it leads to the problem of afforestation we are not able to do that properly so systematic planning has to be done for everything and we have to check the soil erosion also and the conserve of the rainfall of the country too then uh, it's very necessary to control the movement of water we have to uh save it because it is the purpose of the value of life and we can also have small internal uh built up like we can have tanks and small streams and lakes and canals so that we can preserve the water in it and we can also have one more help from that that is the internal transport can also be done with the with that rivers and canals because it is the cheapest form of transport but we hear about the pro programs of the rail and road construction but never we hear about this water transport system so it is also as a matter of concern we have to take care of it then the availability of electric power will also be uh, uh, going up if we have this water facility the lake and the streams because we know electric power is also generated with the water so we can have two benefits here so it can be done like this and we can have a development uh, one or in the directly or indirectly way then in one sense water is commonest of all liquids we can say that water is common in all the liquids liquids but it is uncommon liquid in amazing properties it has the power to give the life to the organisms living organisms thus it is a, it should be a main property it should be a main substance which has to be kept in the field of science for the research but sad to say that it has been in the exhausted field of research it has not been taken interest at all so it is the matter of grave concern we should see we should see about the water being uh, 
being safe for the future the study and the research has to be done and more work has to be done in order to preserve the water for the future generations too so this is what about the chapter about how to conserve the water and the soil erosion how it has to be stopped i hope you understood the chapter and thank you for watching my video if you liked it do hit the like button and share it thank you